Our next speaker is Maggie Featherstone. Uh, she was advised by Professor Karen Miller and postdoc uh, Cynthia Lukianenko. Uh, she went to Granada, Spain, and her majors are Communication Science and Disorders <laughs> in Spanish. And she's going to be talking to us about processing of variable number agreement, evaluating S lenition in comprehension. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Maggie Featherstone, and like Julie said, I will be talking to you about uh, variable number agreement and S lenition in comprehension. So my main question and idea here was how do people use variable cues in online comprehension. We all know that as a sentence unfolds, people process language incrementally, so they're taking in all the information that they can to figure out what might be coming next in the sentence or what cues they can use um, to figure out what's going on in the sentence. These cues may be linguistic or extra-linguistic factors, um, and this all impacts their uh, information processing. So for example, uh, sex, gender, age, and SES are some of these cues that could affect the processing. And as a young woman in college, uh, this might be different. You, what I'm trying to say next, uh, you might be thinking differently than if it was a professor up here speaking. So once again, I'm asking the question, how do these variable cues um, impact processing? So what do I mean when I say variable cues? Um, variable cues are when two or more forms can alternate without changing the meaning of the utterance. Um, for instance, in uh, Andalusian Spanish and also in uh, Latin America, a lot of times they lenite S at the ends of words, um, and as a result, this S, um, th uh, sorry, okay, this S is, um, a lot of times they lenite S at the end of the words, um, and S is a cue to plurality in the Eastern Andalusian region, which is where I did my project over here in Granada, um, and this S can be marked as morphological, non-morphological, and it can also be used as a plural marker. So here are some examples that I have here. And as I said before, this could be due to SES um, uh, gender or sex or age, and these can all have it, um, an impact on how much you're going to vary this. So if S is used as a cue to plurality in non-lenighting uh, varieties of Spanish, what happens in lenighting varieties of Spanish, such as the Andalusian region, um, where, they are, where they're lenighting the S, but they're not getting that cue? Here we're going to talk about tense and lax vowels, and vowels in closed syllable words are typically produced lax. Um, and when I say closed syllable words, I mean words that are usually produced with a consonant at the end. And vowels in open syllable words are typically produced tense. And when I say open syllable words, I mean words that um, are ending in a vowel. So here we have a vowel chart, and as you can see, everyone has a tense and a lax pair with the exception of A. Um, and like I said before, these vowels are showing us that um, uh, these vowels could be possibly be a cue to plurality um, if, in fact, that the S is lenited and they don't have they no longer have that cue to plurality. So, are processing differences found when uh, conditions are fully produced S versus in a lenited S condition? In Andalusian Spanish, lax vowels are typically produced. Um, or in, okay, so in Andalusian Spanish, a lot of times they're leniting S at the end of the words. Or they're not producing S at the end of words. And so now this word is usually produced as an open syllable word. However, vowel frequencies have measured that even though it's now an open syllable word, the vowel is still being produced as lax. And this can be measured by vowel frequencies. As you can see here, there's differences in vowel frequencies in the tense and the lax vowels. Um, and uh, as a result of that, it's possible that they could be able to use this cue um, to plurality. So this led me to my research questions. Um, evaluating, or I'm looking at sociolinguistic and also psycholinguistic research um, to ask the two questions. If vowel quality was a sufficient cue for Andalusian speakers to distinguish between singular and plural forms, and I'm also asking the question of whether the article LOS, which is useful for all nouns, is sufficient to cue plurality even when the S is omitted. In order to test these two questions, I did an eye tracking experiment. Um, and as you can see here on my chart, um, to test question one, I um, was looking at, in order to test question one, I looked at feminine and masculine and also singular and plural forms. Um, and that, this was to test if the, the vowel quality was a sufficient cue. And uh, in order to test question two, I looked at the definite determiners, los and las, um, to see if the article los was still sufficient, a sufficient cue, even if the S was lenited. So here are some examples that I have of the different forms. Um, and here I have a sample trial. 
So in my experiment, I used a four-picture visual world paradigm, um, and my participants either heard the fully pronounced S condition, or they heard a condition when the S was not fully pronounced. So in the fully pronounced S condition, they heard a sentence um, such as this. Pinchen otros perros. So in this example, um, you're able to hear the S, and uh, we would expect them to look at the, um, at the plural picture of the dog because they're able to hear that S. However, even in the fully produced S condition, if they weren't able to pick up on that cue, they could be looking at the um, singular picture of a dog. And then in the reduced S condition, uh, we have participants would hear something, a sentence such as this. Pinche en otro perro. So this was the lenighted S condition, and in this condition, um, they're still, our speaker was still producing um, the plural form, and if participants were able to look at the, um, if participants were able to look at, uh, use the Q of S to plurality, we'd expect them to still look at the target um, of the plural picture of the dogs. However, if they weren't able to look at the, to use this Q, it's possible that they would be looking at the competitor. So these are my results that I have. Right here on the x-axis, we have um, time relative to down onset. And on, here on the y-axis, we have um, portion looking to each picture. So basically, is this still working? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so basically, these um, graphs represent that as the sentence was moving along, they were equally looking at all four pictures until they got the cue of the noun. In which case, when they got the cue of the noun, you could see that they um, immediately were able to look at the target, which is represented here in blue. Um, however, we see that in both the feminine and in the masculine conditions, the competitor... Okay. Um, here we see in the feminine and also the masculine condition that the competitor is lingering more here than it is in the fully produced S condition. Um, so even though they're able to look at the target um, right away, they're clearly able to see the target, they're still um, lingering on this competitor in the, in the reduced conditions for masculine and feminine forms, which tells us, that, tells us that they're wondering what's going on, even if they're able to pick up on the cue of, of the plural S. Um, so further analyses will explore the effect of gender plurality, and also the conditions of uh, participants' looks to the competitor, and I also plan to look at reaction times. Um, as many of you know, I presented this poster at, presented this as a poster presentation at PSU Exling last year, um, or PSU Exling this year, um, and I also presented at YLSS conference last year. So uh, back last year, I was still getting the project moving along, um, and I hadn't figured it out as much as I do now. Um, and like I said, we still plan to uh, look at other results and other areas of interest. Um, and I also plan to submit an abstract to the CUNY conference of human sentence processing in the spring of 2017. Um, so this project is also serving as um, the basis for my honors thesis, which is being advised by Dr. Carol Miller as I work with Karen and Cindy as well. Um, and after graduation, I plan to attend graduate school to become a bilingual speech therapist. My philosophy has always been, I love to talk, so why not help <laughs> <laughs> And Spanish is even better, so. Um, I would like to especially thank everyone in the CLS department, especially Karen and Cindy, um, and Dr. Teresa Bajo, and I had to give Chris a shout out because he really got me oriented when I was in Spain, um, and I was able to help everyone else in, uh, oh, in Granada as well. Um, and I'm very thankful to the PAR and the NSF grant and to have this wonderful opportunity as an undergraduate student. Um, I really enjoyed all aspects of the research, ex my research experience here, and um, it's been wonderful to have the support of everyone here. Um, these are some pictures from my experience. I'll just say, I did Irish dancing and when I was in Ireland, um, so that was me with the band. I got to visit with my family, and uh, here's Chris and I with our friends in Spain. So that was fun, Chris made the um, slideshow. But yes, I would just like to say thank you to everyone. Um, I really appreciate it, so. If you need to grab coffee, this is a good time to come through. In the meantime, there is time for questions. Clara. Okay, so phonetic cues to morphological structure. I love it. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in the fact that you focus primarily on the plural, and I'm wondering if you might find that people are more sensitive to these cues to the existence of a lenighted S when it's morphologically useful compared to when it's just part of the stem. 
are there enough, for example, imageable minimal pairs? Like you had El Mismo, mm -hmm. as, uh, that's what, the same? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so is there, like, is there another word, Mimo, for example? Or are there pairs like that where there's an S yeah. and no S, and so you can have this an ambiguity, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Julie knows more about this than I. Pescado and pecado, which is sin versus fish. Oh, yeah. Right. So it would be really yeah. interesting to see whether you get the same type of use of phonetic cues when it's morphological versus non morphological. Mm -hmm. And they would only be, if I were to do something like that, they would only be listening to it rather than seeing visually what it's. Right now, that's correct. Is that what you're getting at? Well, I mean, yeah. if you're doing visual world, you would mm -hmm. have to find. The well, with the pictures, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, but I mean, in principle, I mean, there is some people do do visual world where you just look at the words. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that that can be done. Yeah. No, that, I I didn't really thought of that before, but that's a really good point. Other questions, John. Well, since nobody in Granada, when they're actually speaking on the street, uses final S, the fact that you had some examples of final S, you're already sort of putting him in a, in a kind of a special mindset. It'd uh, be interesting to see if you, uh, what happens if you only give them the examples with the, with the vowel laxing, because for most people in that area, that's what they do. I mean, singular is a tense vowel, plural is a lax vowel, and S is something that you do at school, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to being part of their natural speech. So yeah. by having both in the experiment, I'm wondering if that maybe got them distracted from what they usually do, which is uh, listening we, only to the vowel. We thought about that as well. Um, and before going to Granada, we kind of got mixed um, reviews about like, do they, how much did they actually pronounce the S, like, with the, given the fact that it's at a university versus, um, you know, street talk. So. But you only did yeah. we only did one or the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was either you got just lenited forms or, okay. right. oh. or the full. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Maggie, thank you very much. Thank you.